okay, so uh, hi everybody. I, I hope you're doing well. Um, I, I want to introduce uh, Christopher Lee, who uh, Christopher Lee graduated from Yale in 2018, in 2018 uh, with distinction in computer science and in astrophysics, and he won Yale's uh, Beckwith Prize for astronomy. His research focuses on uh, highly scalable network analytics, and today he's going to talk to us about some recent work he's doing. Uh, so, uh, Chris, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Robert. Uh, I'm gonna uh, sorry, actually, before we start, can I understand the protocol if we want to ask questions? Mm -hmm. or what's the protocol? Do we use a raise hand or we just interrupt? Just trying to figure out a protocol. Sorry. Oh, anyway. Yes, usually like maybe Robert, you can monitor the chat and if people have questions, you can interrupt, but everyone else can just type in the chat. Good idea. Sure, I'll do that. Wonderful. Excellent. Let's get started then. Well, hello everybody. Um, oh, one question before we start. Robert, how much time am I shooting for before um, we should open the floor to questions? I think um, we have an hour time slot, so uh, let's leave at least 10 minutes for, for questions. Okay, so I'm gonna set myself a, um, I'm gonna set myself a little timer for 45, let's go, let's, let's go 40 minutes, just leave time. Perfect, for self-reference. Excellent, um, let's get started. Hello everyone. Um, like Robert said, my name is Chris Relief, and I'm going to talk to you all a little bit today about a project that I was doing with Rich and Robert at Facebook, um, FlowDB, uh, a general scalable framework for fast network analytics. So let's set the scene a little bit. Um, not to belabor the point, but analytics, of course, are crucial for the operation and management of networks. For example, network operators use analytics for um, network planning and optimization, for example, to ba load balance network traffic of distributed systems, um, for configuration analysis and verification, for example, to ensure that network forwarding behavior matches high level policy, for network abstraction, to compute abstract networks to construct, to conduct joint network, applica network application optimization, and cybersecurity analysis, for example, to detect DDoS attacks or malicious malware behavior. Um, network analytics can be quite challenging for large internet service providers or cloud service providers or network content providers due to three high level issues. The first challenge is scale. For example, a Facebook data center can contain hundreds of thousands of switches and petabytes of forwarding table state. Um, the second challenge is network diversity. Different classes of networks, for example, enterprise, data center backbone uh, can deploy switches with very different feature sets. Moreover, networks within the same class tend to be extremely diverse. For example, the data centers operated by Facebook um, has different subsections highly tailored to particular um, requirements and task workloads. The third key challenge of network analytics is of course task diversity. Network analytic tasks as we've discussed range for verifying that a network behaves correctly under a range of failure scenarios to, com to computing complex routing properties. A network analytics engine must be able to answer a wide range of nonetheless highly specified network uh, analytics questions. To date, most existing work on network analytics has focused on point solutions for solving a particular analytic task uh, using data or about sometimes even about a particular uh, network protocol. Uh, Flow Director, for example, um, is focused on computing routing costs between hosts uh, and BGP. Verification systems like Minesweep or Plankton tend to be somewhat more general, but even they tend to be limited to um, predicate verification in that they allow, um, although they, they tend to allow operators to verify that network behavior satisfies a very wide ranging range of Booleans. Um, this lack of generality forces researchers to reinvent the wheel time and time again as new use cases arise, which existing tools don't quite cover. Um, so for example, it would have been great if the um, flow director folks could have used, say, 
uh, Minesweeper to do, to do that traffic cost mapping, but it's quite hard to do um, complex arithmetic cost mapping using um, SMT solvers. Moreover, without a common analytic framework, existing systems cannot easily leverage powerful optimizations that could be commonly applied. Um, while it would be highly, uh, um, so what's our approach? We're gonna pr uh, propose a slightly different mechanism to existing work. Rather than propose a mechanism to perform a slightly uh, specific analytic task, we're gonna try and develop a data model um, and a representation of network state, which can be populated by data connected from not only flow tables, but also logs, traces, and configuration information. This model can then be queried by operators to determine a wide range of global properties about the system. So specifically, what are we gonna try and do? Well, specifically, we're going to implement uh, this work where I'm gonna talk about two key theoretical contributions today. Um, the flow relation, a novel representation of a relation which can efficiently capture both data plane state and traditional database relations, and the flow algebra, an extension of the relational algebra over flow relations. This mathematical foundation that we're gonna describe is gonna allow us to apply a wealth of prior work on database optimizations to network analytic queries. To demonstrate the power of our approach, we're gonna build the FlowDB system, a Postgres SQL database augmented with flow relations and the flow algebra. FlowDB is queried by FlowSQL, a dialect of SQL built over the flow algebra designed to simplify domain-specific queries. FlowDB is also gonna leverage three different key optimizations. First of all, we're gonna modify Postgres SQL's planet optimizer um, query cost estimation function, and thus use um, Postgres SQL's planet optimizer to actually optimize network analytic queries. Secondly, we're gonna take advantage of the algebraic properties of the relational algebra to really efficiently perform incremental update on our queries when the underlying network changes. Thirdly, we're gonna demonstrate how we can weave um, domain-specific optimizations into our database-based framework by building a packet equivalence index for our tables, utilizing ideas um, about packet equivalence from atomic predicates and plankton. Uh, so, what are the benefits of our system? Well, we're gonna show how, with these optimizations combined, we're gonna build a system which operates 50x faster than headspace analysis, 400x faster than network optimized data log, and that can scale to a Facebook data center containing 1 million rules, 100K switches, and um, say 10K switches and 100K links, and query this data center in 10 sec in, in 50 seconds. Um, the limitations of um, the FlowDB are as follows. First of all, FlowDB is tar targets the data plane, not the control plane since we have this idea that we're gonna use some version of the flow table as a fundamental unit in our analysis, which of course cuts us off from useful uh, control plane analysis, such as examining um, what happens to, what, such as doing verification under different network environments or under different failure scenarios. Secondly, um, we're gonna limit um, the actions that we consider today to those actions found in um, OpenFlow, I think 1.1, 1.2. In particular, this means that we're not going to consider stateful actions, which are considered outside the scope of FlowDB. Finally, we're going to limit, we're going to ignore um, language specific constructs. Um, there are other uh, data plane verification systems which are designed, for example, for P4, like P4V or Vera, which can do things like um, verify the P4 um, parser as well as a P4 data plane. We're not going to consider that. We're just going to think about a generic um, data plane program with some manner of flow table. Um, so with that, before I dive into a more motivating example, um, are there any questions? Anything I haven't made clear so far? How much time do I have? 32 minutes, great. All right, let's dive in. So consider the network um, shown uh, in front of you. Um, this network contains two switches, switch A and switch B programmed with the tables TA and TB. 
switch switch A is connected to the host at 9.0.0.0, while switch switch B is connected to the um, 254 hosts, 10.0.0.1 um, to 10.0.0.255. Suppose my net's operator asks the question, uh, which packets can travel from the host on switch A to the hosts 10.0.0.5 uh, and 9.0.0.9 .9 on switch B? Um, intuitively, um, the operator could answer this question by I, um, checking which of the packets with destination IP between 9.0.0.5 and 9.0.0.9 .9 are forwarded by TA out port B. And then secondly, checking which of these packets are subsequently forwarded out TB uh, by TB out port four. If TA and TB were traditional relations, the operator could accomplish this task by applying a selection to um, a relation and then joining the results using the relational algebra shown at the bottom right of the screen. Um, and this, uh, while this approach does seem natural and powerful, the relational algebra cannot be applied to flow tables like T and T B directly because of three key challenges, actions, priority, and wildcard expressions. Let's talk about these challenges one at a time. So our first challenge is actions. Um, constructing T B, uh, that's the um, query you see to the right of the screen on the table you see on the top right of the screen, requires extending selection to handle actions. Um, naively, um, one could think of these actions as just strings and um, our, our, our selection is just searching these actions for a desired string. But this falls, in a, this, this falls short in a number of key cases. For example, should this query select the tuple destination IP 10.0.0.x actions forward out when the variable out is equal to four? Intuitively, one would say that it should, but naive string matching, of course, would reject such a rule. As a further complication, an action's parameter might even be non-constant over the range of packets its rule matches on. For example, consider that second tuple, destination 9.0.0.x, actions, for the packet out, destination IP mod two plus one. Um, if rule R2 contained this action, should on the query that we see return it? This action evaluates to forwards four for a packet with, um, for example, a packet with destination IP 9.0.0.0.1, but forward three for a packet with destination IP 9.0.0.2. A second key problem is priority. Naively performing selection um, by selecting each rule whose action set contains forward four yields the flow table you see below containing single rule one, 9.0.0.x, action, forward out port four. But this result incorrectly implies that TB forwards packets with destination IP 9.0.0.0 out port two, so out port four, when really it forwards them out port three. Unlike a tuple in a relation, a rule in a flow table's semantic meaning can be affected by other rules. Selection cannot ignore a rule that doesn't satisfy its predicate if that rule overrides a rule that does. Our third challenge is wildcard expressions. Um, constructing TA, looking at the um, second piece of relational algebra in our um, little relational algebra expression, requires extending selection to handle var card exp um, expressions. Um, it's unclear, perhaps, whether this rule should return uh, rule S2, 1, 9.0.0.x actions, forward out port 2. And in practice, we would like selection to split a rule if some values it represents satisfy its predicate, but not others. And of course, the problem with trying to split a rule with wildcard expressions is that as, um, I believe, as we've known since Hedderspace analysis, and, and, and indeed probably well before then, the only operation that you can really reliably apply to a wildcard expression is intersection. Um, to taking a set difference or a union between two intersections, uh, between two wildcard expressions rather, um, may produce um, a large number of wildcard expressions. Um, so our, key, our three key challenges 
which are going to make applying uh, the relational model to um, flow tables difficult are to reiterate actions, um, priority, and wildcard expressions. So, um, any questions so far before I dive into um, how we're going to try and solve these problems? 26 minutes. I have a question. Please. Uh, are you considering uh, designing a language for expressing these things and that will be compiled down to queries? Is that the, is that the um, idea? So right now, actually, we use a dialect of SQL called FlowSQL uh, because you're right, no one programs in, in the relational algebra. Um, and um, the theory is that programmers with FlowDB can write to the network Use, uh, using familiar SQL queries, uh, which we may or may not want to enhance with domain-specific keywords. We'll see when we get there that we've, we, we suggest a couple domain-specific keywords that we think give SQL extra power for network-specific use cases. All right, let's go on to look at our approach. So the first observation we make is that a flow table is equivalent to a unique relation. How do we get here? Well, a flow table represents a map intuitively from a set of input header fields to I, a set of output ports, if, it if the table contains 40 actions, B, probably some other flow table, because it's probably going to contain a jump action, and C, a set of output header fields, because it might contain um, right actions. And each component of this map can nominally be represented one at a time in a relation. And we're going to term this relation um, a, uh, a flow table's canonical relation. For example, um, the flow table TA that we were discussing earlier is canonical relation is shown on the screen in front of you. This suggests um, our first uh, solution. Uh, naively, we can just expand, we can apply the relational model to the data plane by simply expanding each flow table into its canonical relation and then placing these relations in a relational database. Unfortunately, this expansion can produce a very, very large table since, first of all, uh, a wildcard uh, wild expression with k wildcards over an n letter alphabet represents n to the k atomic values. So expanding out wildcard expressions can result in an exponential increase in the size of the table. Moreover, since two wildcard expressions can in intersect each other, n to the k minus one times, merely restructuring a flow table so that no rule overrides another rule can also blow up state exponentially. And of course, for our data, uh, Facebook hyperscale data centers with more than um, 100 million rules, which match on trillions of IPv6 addresses, expansion is going to produce an impractically large amount of data. Expansion isn't totally useless, however. Um, ex ex expansion tends to be a very efficient way um, to remove actions. Um, frequently, unless you have an action that reads a match field, which contains a very, very large um, wildcard expression, um, we can evaluate, uh, we can expand and evaluate out actions and only, um, and empirically on Facebook's um, data center, only receive a small increase in um, table rule number. When we expand our actions, our result is a traditional database relation, but one augmented with wildcards and priority. We're going to term this relation the flow relation, and we're going to talk about how to manipulate this next. Um, so here we can see um, our table TA expanded into a flow relation. Um, we can see that we've expanded out its action set into regular attributes. And then secondly, because to make the math more elegant, instead of having an explicit um, priority attribute, we've absorbed priority into a tuple ordering. Um, uh, so let's see how these three things, the flow relation, the flow uh, table, and the canonical relation really relate. So a uh, um, flow table space, T, is shown on the left of the low diagram in front of you. Um, flow tables simplify to flow relations by removing the actions. So we can map flow tables to flow, um, flow tables to flow relation space. And this mapping is n to one. Multiple um, flow relations uh, can, so multiple flow tables may map to the same flow relation. A canonical rep, uh, relation is the um, regular traditional database relation that a flow table and a flow relation represent. 
um, even though this diagram doesn't show it, the mapping from flow relation space to canonical relation space is also many to one. Um, and of course, a flow table and its flow relation are going to represent the same canonical relation. The flow relation happens to have the benefit of being a very, very compact representation of a data point object, yet, as we will show, quite manipulable. Um, so this, and, and this leads us to our second solution, which is um, that we can implement, um, that we're going to try and implement each relational algebra operator over the concept of the flow relation that we've discussed. So let's formalize this concept. We're going to say that a binary operator op over flow relations is relational algebraically consistent to the relational algebra operator which we're going to determine brackets op if um, the canonical relation of F1 of, of any flow relation F1, a canonical relation of any flow algebra op, of any flow relation F2, uh, uh, when we apply this binary operator to it, to these two um, uh, regular relations, we get the same result as if we took the two flow relations, we applied the binary operator to them, and then we took the canonical operator, um, and, and then we took, and then we found the can, uh, canonical relation of the result. Um, a similar definition is going to exist for unary operators, and we're going to turn these operators the flow algebra. So, by definition, um, F1 op 2's canonical relation and F1 op, op F2 represent equivalent information. The flow algebra thus allows network tables to be manipulated by the relational algebra while preserving their compactness. In other words, the flow, uh, the flow relation the, um, provides a compact target for the flow algebra, which is a efficient algebra, nonetheless of equivalent strength to the relational algebra. We can see here that, um, that these two big, that the big um, uh, operation, the small operation, are computationally the same, and now we can do the small operation. The flow algebra also has the really, really nice property that by construction, it inherits the relational algebra's algebraic properties. Um, so for example, uh, as, a as a little lemma, let's, let's think through commutativity inheritance. I um, mean, specifically this says that if our um, binary relational algebra operator op is associative, then, um, the flow algebra equivalent of that relation of that algebra is associative. So concretely, because union is associative, flow union, the flow algebra's version of union, is also going to be associative. And we have a little proof here um, that um, F1 op F2's canonical relation is equal to the uh, regular relation produced by taking the canonical relation of F1, the canonical relation of F2, and applying brackets up to it. We then take advantage of the fact that we know that brackets op is associative to swap F1 and F2. And then we apply the RA consistency principle again to get um, F4, F2 op F1 brackets. This is going to allow us to leverage relational algebra query plans, which have been developed in the database literature with flow algebra to enhance our, um, query, our network analytics queries. Um, so what are the key challenges um, behind um, constructing these mythical flow algebra operators? Well, first of all, if we have two, op if, if we have two relations and we want to combine them, we need some way of merging um, their, uh, these relations uh, orderings. And the solution to this, which, was, which um, is actually not novel to us and um, came up in um, pr uh, programs like Flowvisor, is you, you, you can merge priority orderings by using a product ordering. Our second, um, this, a second key challenge is, well, we, uh, two, relation, two flow relations are going to have things like wildcard expressions. How can we combine them? And of course, wildcard intersection is also an operation which is quite well developed. Another um, key uh, problem, which we saw earlier, is um, well, how do we apply selection predicates to wildcard expressions? That looks like we can't have to split a wildcard expression. And our solution, however, is that um, 
uh, most selection predicates can be very, very efficiently turned into um, an equivalent flow relation. And then we can use um, uh, ordering, product ordering and wildcard intersection um, to merge these two um, flow relations and simplifying um, So that's a little bit of the taste of the approach that FlowDB is, the theoretical approach that FlowDB is going to try and take to do network analytics. Um, now we're going to look at the system that we're going to build on top of um, the relational model that we've applied to the data plane. Um, but I'm going to stop here for questions. Um, 15 minutes late. Okay. So I have a question. Please. Uh, you are talking about flow algebra and relation algebra, and there are lots of ways to interpret those words. And by let me ask uh, something specific. By relation algebra, do you mean in the sense of database relations, or yes. do you mean in the sense of Tarski and relation algebra, uh, algebra of binary relations? And by flow algebra, what is that? What are the operators? What are the what are the models? Uh, I don't. I, you haven't told us what any of these operators are yet. Okay, um, so the flow algebra, um, so we're going to use um, the, as relational algebra, we're going to use um, the um, relational algebra um, defined in Codd's paper. Um, um, uh, the operands of our flow algebra is going to be the flow relation. And the operators of the flow algebra is we're going to have a operator um, for each, um, excuse me, we're going to have an oper, we're going to, for each relational algebra operator, um, Cartesian product, selection, projection, union, set difference, um, and then I guess some of the, the derived ones, natural join is a big one. Um, we're going to generate an equivalent flow algebra operation, a flow algebra operator um, in our flow algebra over flow relations. And each operator is going to be defined, each binary flow algebra operator is going to be defined as um, we see on the screen. That is a valid, um, a valid implementation of flow Cartesian product. Um, takes two flow relations and produces a flow relation whose canonical relation is equivalent to the uh, relation that you'd get if you just computed the canonical um, if you just computed the canonical uh, relation associated with each of the individual flow operators ahead of time and applied regular Cartesian product to that. Um, similarly, Flow selection um, is going to be a unary operator uh, acting on one uh, flow relation. And the output of flow selection is going to be a flow relation, which is equivalent to, whose canonical relation is equivalent to the relation that you get by um, taking the canonical relation of the input to selection and um, applying regular database selection with the same predicate to that regular database relation. Does that help? Uh, yes, I'm still a little unclear about what a flow relation actually is, but I assume that will uh, become clear later on in your talk. Um, okay, um, before, um, uh, before pushing forwards, um, because, um, so what is a flow relation? So we can think a flow relation, um, we'll, we'll, we'll use the flow relation that we have in front of us as a concrete example. So flow relation is gonna consist of two parts, a bag of things that we're gonna call flow tuples and an ordering over those flow tuples. And this ordering is gonna be a partial ordering. What is a flow tuple? A flow tuple is just a tuple of wildcard expressions. We say that a flow tuple represents an atomic tuple, sorry, I'm gonna define an atomic tuple as a tuple of just regular atomic values. And I'm gonna say a flow tuple represents an atomic tuple 
if um, the flow if um, each of the if each of the pairwise elements of the flow tuple matches the, the corresponding element in the atomic tuple. So for example, um, the flow tuple uh, 9.0.0.x2 is going to be said to, um, to match on the atomic tuple 9.0.0.2.2. Um, so a flow relation is an ordered bag, sorry, an, an ordered set, I should say, of um, flow tuples. A flow relation is said to represent a tuple if um, one, an atomic tuple, if one, some, um, excuse me, if one, some um, regular, um, some flow tuple in the flow relation matches on that atomic tuple. And two, um, no, Oof, I, suppose, I, I suppose I should I should take a step back for a second because I'm, I'm well. Ha hang on, uh, I'm not really seeing much difference between the flow table and the flow relation. They look like pretty much the same thing to me. They are pretty much the same thing, with the key exception that we've stripped out um, actions. Uh, I thought the action was forwarding out the port. It is. So for um so to so, give so how a, was it stripped um, out? They're they're there in both of them. Um, okay, stripped out is the wrong word. Maybe evaluated out would be the correct word. Um, for uh, for example, suppose that instead of um, t um, t um, t the first um, a rule in um, mm. t one being um, forward one. It's going to be for it's the action was forward out, where out is some variable um, originating um, written by some table, is um, written previously by some table. Um, to turn that flow table into a flow relation, we would have to evaluate um, the value of out um, for um, the for the um, execution sequence that triggers. Um, rule S1, and then um, replace out with the, um, with, with the value it evaluates to. This can blow up a flow table size. Um, for example, if it turned out that um, many different execution paths uh, can arrive at a particular rule, and moreover, that um, on each of these different execution paths, the rules actions happen to be different because they read or write of variables that were written differently. We have to um, break down that rule into a whole set of rules. Um, we might even have to add additional attrib input attributes um, if one of the rules actions reads um, a variable which isn't a match field. Um, nonetheless, um, empirically, and I, um, um, from my work on Facebook, at Facebook, I found that um, in real-world Facebook data centers, um, the, the translation from flow table to flow relation is really quite straightforward. And so a flow relation can be thought of as a reasonable proxy for a flow table, which we can nonetheless manipulate systematically. Does okay. that help? Yeah. OK, um, great. How much time do I have left? I have seven minutes. And 50 seconds. Okay, so let's skip over a little bit. And let's quickly talk about um, um, the, the, the system that we're, that we're going to try and build on top of everything. Um, so, um, in um, so in addition to these operators, um, and um, we'll, I'll leave the um, definitions of these operators and the proofs that they um, um, satisfy this definition for the for a technical report which i'm happy to link anyone who wants to read to after the uh, after this talk um we're going to we're, we're going to try and build a database system on top of um these flow operators and this database system is going to come in two parts first of all we're going to uh we're going to um introduce this thing called um excuse me um we're going to introduce this thing called flow SQL, which is a dialect of SQL 
built on top of the flow algebra, much as the regular SQ rel is built on top of the regular relational data model. Moreover, um, we've we also noticed when we were at Facebook that most network analytics queries tend to share a common pattern. That is, they, they tend to want to build some portion of a flow relation listing each packet history, um, i.e. each stage in the packet's journey through the network, um, and then search it for a particular type of history. And to simplify these queries, FlowDB is going to automatically generate this relation as a virtual view, which we're going to term the history relation. And then FlowSQL is going to provide special domain-specific syntax to uh, navigate this history relation. So let's talk, let, let, let's, let's quickly define this history relation. Then I'll show you a couple of queries that we've um, written and actually run on our FlowDB system at Facebook. Um, well, like we've said, um, the history relation is built on the concept of packet state. A packet state, we're going to say, can, consists of four components. Physical location, the last port the packet traversed. Logical location, the processing element the packet is about to enter. This could be a flow relation or the network's links. Header fields, um, the packet's header field values, or metadata fields. Um, a, packet, um, um, a packet history, then, is a sequence of, uh, of states, is a sequence of packet states um, that the network pa routes a packet through. Um, for example, one packet history is shown um, here. Uh, P uh, a pa the packet PS1 entering the network at port one with destination IP 9.0.0.1 is routed to PS2, PS3, PS4, and it's put in the port with port incrementing in turn. Um, the history relation, which we build um, using our flow algebra, um, then lists each history in the network. Um, <clears throat> um, FlowSQL provides a certain, a certain number of special keywords for querying this, um, not quite a relation, um, because normally it, it, it could theoretically have an unbounded number of attributes if there's an infinite loop. Although in practice, we terminate infinite loops by um, writing null values into the um, relation after, off, after the first loop. Um, in particular, um, FlowSQL has this idea of an indexed attribute. Uh, which um, references an attribute belonging to the nth packet uh, state. So for example, uh, at port three um, is a indexed attribute on port, uh, referencing the port in the, um, in the third state in the history table. Um, and and uh, FlowSQL is also going to provide this curious keyword called last, which is going to reference um, the last non-nil occurrence of a um, attribute in a rule in the history table. So for example, to compute reachability, which packets are routed from port S to port D, uh, one would write the um, flow SQL query, select all from the history table, where port one is equal to S and port last is equal to D. Similarly, um, to um, do waypointing, we introduce um, this, we're gonna introduce one additional concept called index variables. And the idea is that oftentimes a programmer might want to check whether any or all of a history steps match a particular pattern. For example, waypoint verification. Does any packet traveling from port S to port D not pass through um, port W requires identifying each history where um, no port is equal to W. So, and in FlowSQL, we're going to, we express these tasks by an any slash all predicate. And the idea of an any slash all predicate is that it takes a set of index values, i, j, and so on, and a predicate with an index attributes that takes those values as indices. Um, and um, our all predicate is true if all such bindings of index variables to integers satisfy p. So for example, the, our waypoint inquiry select star from history where port one equals s and port last equals d and all for all i port i is not equal to w is true for um, any um, row in our history table where port one is s and port last is d um, and for all occurrences of port that is for all possible bindings of i in the in the natural numbers that we can come up with port i is not equal to w 
Um, conversely, an example of finite loop detection, um, does any packet visit the um, same port twice? Um, we're going to select everything from history, where for any i, j, where i is not equal to j, and i and j are in the natural numbers, um, port i is equal to port j. Um, and we implemented um, each uh, um, our, our, our kind of hacked version of the data plane on top of Postgres, which allows us to access um, three particular optimizations for um, our system. Firstly, um, we um, since um, uh, by and large mostly what we're doing is joining network tables together. We can leverage um, the Postgres's planner optimizer quite effectively to do um, join order optimization. Secondly, um, since um, all um, almost all the um, relevant um, uh, relational algebra and extended relational algebra operators that we're interested in commute um, and flow algebra, sorry, uh, distribute over union and set difference, and flow algebra inherits these properties, we can actually um, do incremental update um, by, re by reordering um, our, uh, by reordering the, um, the, uh, uh, flow, uh, the, flow, the flow algebra expressions that we compile our flow SQL queries into to do incremental update. And then thirdly, we take advantage of um, packet equivalents, much as, that would be my timer, um, AP Keep or um, Plankton does. Um, very quickly, um, I'm going to take two minutes and give you our experimental results. We ran two experiments on um, FlowDB. First of all, we benchmarked FlowDB um, against existing analytics tools. Secondly, we executed a wide variety of tasks on um, one of Facebook's hyperscale data centers. Um, these are the two net, uh, networks we, we ran our experiments on. We ran it on the classic snapshot of Stanford's campus. Um, when we ran it on the snapshot, we used um, the snapshot before um, uh, irrelevant or access rules were removed away, were, were waved away. Um, this uh, the snapshot had um, three quarters of a million IP forwarding rules, um, 1.5k ACL rules, a thousand VLANs. And we also tested our, our um, FlowDB on a Facebook data center switching fabric, which had more than 100 million IPv, IP forwarding rules, 10k switches, and 100k links. Um, very briefly, um, uh, we found that um, FlowDB uh, ran um, 50 times faster than HSA and about 400 times faster than NOD. And um, the real benefit came from leveraging Postgres' planner optimizer. There are a couple, um, we found that there were a couple um, servers, sorry, um, switches in Stanford's network that had a not, an anonymously low number of rules. And um, if we and if um, your um, and and if your um, your, um, your your path um, and if and if these servers were on the path between um, a um, source and a destination node, um, Postgres op Postgres's optimizer achieved gains by joining these servers flow tables first. Um, we then ran FlowDB on um, our Facebook data center switching fabric on a whole bunch of different queries, traditional verification queries like reachability or equal cost multipath, a bunch of fa internal Facebook policies, um, which are real and implemented by Facebook um, policymakers currently, and then um, flow directors um, cost map function. And we found that um, by and large, we could um, run these queries on a Facebook data center switching fabric in between um, 50 seconds to a minute um, for um, queries which didn't require searching the entire Facebook data center, and in two or three hours for, face for queries which required us to process the vast majority of, um, tape of rules in the data center. Um, so to conclude, uh, FlowDB is a powerful frame, gen, and generic framework which 
I, executes complex general generic queries and compressed data, and B, uh, leverages um, decades of database optimizations to, uh, uh, to solve network analytics problems. And we found that um, our Postgres SQL implementation could service a hyperscale data center satisfactorily on a single Albit beefy machine. Um, and um, I'll, hand back, I'll hand over to Robert to um, manage questions. Thank you so much for listening. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, before wrapping up, I want to see uh, Dexter, you have your hand raised. Do you have a, a, a question? Or, uh, oh, sorry, I guess that was a clap. Yeah, that was a clap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so, are, are However, there... I do have a question. Oh, please. What is the claps? I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Have you, uh, are you at all familiar with the Netcat language and have you done any comparisons to Netcat? Um, yes. M um, like, um, I, 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 it, look, I it looks to me like a lot of high level mathematical similarity because we're, we're both kind of based around um, Clean algebras? Clean algebras, right. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a lot of the things that you mentioned uh, as applications, uh, connectivity and waypointing and um, loop detection, black hole detection uh, can be done quite nicely in, in Netcat. And we've run a bunch of experiments and they uh, also compare very favorably with uh, header space analysis. And I'm just wondering if you've uh, done any head-to-head -head comparisons with Netcat. Um. No, I shall. Um, that's a um, very, very promising avenue of comparison. Um, man, um, I, don't, I, I assume the code is publicly available by the um, question? Uh, yes, I believe it is. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Dexter. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, if not, then uh, maybe let's thank the speaker, Chris. Uh, uh, I guess there's some uh, <laughs> claps on here silently, but <laughs> Chris, thank you. Yeah.